There we go. Hello. Welcome. Press your recording happy button. <laughs> Press your happy button and stay in the room with us. And I'm going to continue to admit people as uh, they come in, um, as they do whenever they'd like. And if you don't know where you are, you're at the Kind Mind Community Room. And my name is Kelly Mabel, and I'm really happy to have you all here. And today is um, a meeting of the East Coast and the West Coast, which is much overdue. It's called the Canadian Contingents. And let me share with you just a little bit before we begin with my beautiful friend, um, Martine. Um, kind Mind Community began in January, January 8th, if I'm not mistaken, this year with Elsie. And I asked Elsie, I said, I asked her a question. I said, how can I bring the three Ps back home? Back home to Canada and also back home to those who want it within. And she said, she said to me, well, she says, I just know the one thing that I did is I, I got out there. I just got out there. And I didn't know what that really meant, but it, it was clear to me after we had that conversation what to do. And I just started this room and I asked her to come. And I said, would you come and open with me the room so that can the Canadians, you know, uh, can can hear the message along with all of our beautiful global people? And she said, sure. And so that begun what was the, you know, Canadian contingent of three principles where uh, Sydney Banks message began, which was on Salt Spring Island, about one hour away from where I live, which is in Port Moody, British Columbia. And it's taken this long for the East Coast to meet the West Coast because Martine is from uh, Quebec and I am from, originally from Toronto. And so now the message seven months later is finally creeping its way across Canada. And I said to Martine, would you love to come and share your wisdom and be a part of the room and um, share the, the conversation? Because um, this was really the intention. And I loved how it went from Canada to across the globe and back again. So, you know, ha more than halfway through, here we are, and uh, Quebec, the East Coast is showing up, and uh, I'm really happy to have you, Mark. Actually, in Gatineau, which is the Quebec side of Ottawa, so <laughs> it qualifies totally, but still. Yes, yes. So we're going to have a um, open. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I lived in Victoria when Sid was still alive. I have missed an opportunity big time, but anyway, so there we go. <laughs> Well, maybe it was just wasn't meant to be at that point, you know, <laughs> he, he might have been some doing something else. Who knows? Who knows? Well, it all comes in the time that that it comes and we're here and I'm super happy to be here and I'm happy to have all of you in the room and welcome, Sharon. You just came in. Where is she? Oh, she. she oh, there she is. Welcome, Sharon. Lovely to have you as well. And so um, we're going to have a conversation with Martine and I often say to them, the speakers before they come is, you know, I really don't think the kind mind room is about credentials. You know, it's not about our intellectual knowledge or data. It's not about the experience of um, all that we have come to this moment to know. It's about what we're open to seeing that's fresh and new. And that is something that we haven't seen before. And so Martine was of the, the same mind uh, that uh, we're just going to jump right into a what we call a wisdom conversation. And uh, she's going to unfold some of her experience, some of the hopes and insights and things that she's seen. And um, we'll we'll take the uh, the journey on the magic carpet ride as it comes. And I'd like to welcome Alexander to the room. Nice for you. Nice of you for coming. So Martine. I'm going to turn it over to speaker view. Give me a moment here. There we go. All right. Welcome and happy to have you, my friend. Happy to have you. Well, thank you for inviting me. I was a bit surprised because now you had Diggins and, and Judy Sandwich and, 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 and Elsie says, ooh, and little me. <laughs> um, but uh, thank you for the invitation. And yeah, the three P's has been, I've been in that conversation four years, 
I think maybe five, all the, the, the years blended to, uh, together. And like most people, I've been on a spiritual path for, for, for a few years. Now we rarely stumble on the, on the 3P from the first, uh, first go. Uh, most people went through a, a different route. And yeah, so for, what attracted me to the, the three principles was more the spiritual side of it. Uh, always been in the helping uh, profession, um, doing different things across Canada and Europe, and and doing lots of volunteer work. And like most people, like I guess uh, searching, <laughs> uh, searching for something uh, deeper. And I was following uh, Jamie Smart. And that's how I came across the, the three principles. And he kept say, sending stuff about class swing. And so I took a couple of his workshops and then I decided to take the plunge. So that's how I came in the, in the, the three P world through glass wing. And then I did his uh, coaching training and his mentorship training. And I keep going to all those three P stuff. Uh, with Dickens or Elsie or, uh, or Natasha or Michael Neal. Actually, this weekend, today, I'm supposed to be with Michael Neal, another going deeper workshop. Um, so I'm always, because there's always something new to find. Like I said, I, what attracted me to um, the three P's was the spiritual side. I wanted something to go more in touch with my soul. I know we cannot be disconnected from, from our soul, but it felt like it was something, it felt like I couldn't connect to it, even though we're, in theory, we're one. And um, so that's what attracted me to this, the, the 3 P uh, world. And like I said, I've always been in the helping profession as I was a dietitian in the armed forces and then I did all kinds of other things. And uh, for the last 14 years, I was an hypnotherapist um, doing, working only with traumas and emotional problems. I also master in social work. So that's what I've been doing. Still introducing the three P's into, into the mix. I'm trying more and more to talk from the three P's and not talking three P's <laughs> to uh, the client because I think it's um, a bit different. No, if not trying to preach um, because there will be a pullback. Oh, yeah, yes, but yes, I know that. But always oh, like mindfulness or it's like um, this and that. So I'm trying to speak more and more from the three principles, from my understanding, most of the time, still a work in progress, and um, and wanting to look deeper into that uh, that that understanding to go from knowing to knowing. That's probably why I'm in all those those classes. Um, because I really want to go from knowing to knowing, to, to go from an intellectual knowing to a really an awareness that that's, that's what it is. And we have some beautiful teachers uh, on that, like the Jack Brinsky or, or, or Mabel Karn or Elsie's that are so good in deep listening to people and so good to speak behind the mask and so good to speak soul to soul and that's something that i find it's inspiring or something to aspire to like i said still a work in progress <laughs> um especially having you no know, 14 years of okay they say that i need to do this i need to do that um, but 
but I'm very glad that I stumble into that understanding, not to be able to speak more and more behind the, behind the mask and helping uh, people um, more deeply than just one issue at a time and help them to see where our experience is coming from. Uh, for me, it helped me a lot. Um, I feel I'm more patient, um, a bit less like a chicken with my head cut off. No, oh, like I said, I wanted to get in touch with my soul. Let's try this training and see if I can get in touch with my soul. Oh, let's try this training if I can get in touch with my soul. And it gave me a, a, a better grounding and also a more personal side. I used to go show up in meetings thinking everybody will hate me. And now it doesn't show up as much. I never realized that I was doing a, a training with Jack Prinsky. It was a five day intensive. And we're a group of us. And I noticed, oh, that didn't show up. Um, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> um, so that's a bit of a, a, a life changing thing, you know, to show up and um, have, have a better experience of, uh, of a group. And like I said, more grounded, uh, not taking things so seriously and playing with life. Um, I've done many, many, many things in my life. I had a uh, good fortune to be able to try different activities and different things. But now there's more or less seriousness in it, more lightness in it. I'm doing things because it feels like a good idea to do it. Um, like the little message of hope uh, a year ago, a bit over a year, when COVID started, I, I started to uh, um, do a little message of hope interview and Kelly participate in the uh, Colette uh, participated uh, in my little message of hope of interview, uh, the sort of message of hope interviews because I wanted to bring some hope to counteract the uh, message of the media of uh, fear, 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 anxiety, anxiety, anxiety. And to interview people, asking one question really, and the whole having this understanding helps them navigate whatever shows up in, in, in their life. And different things. I've just re written a little ebook. I've just, I'm, I'm just playing with life, just trying different things. And I also made a decision that starting September, I still shouldn't say that, but I was still seeing people live and um, decided to close my office uh, first of September and move everything online. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. No, I have nothing on it. And two, um, as you might notice my accent, uh, I, I work mostly in French and in the French speaking world, the treaties are not well known. Uh, there's uh, another lady in Montreal, uh, I'm in near Ottawa and there's a couple in France, but that's it. So I'm going probably to, to create groups and create e-courses to introduce um, the three Ps from, no, to the French speaking world. And just play, just play with life. No, there's no seriousness. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, I will try something different and I, I'm, I'm following my wisdom and trusting that it will work and trusting um, that I will show, I will be at the right place at the right time. And like I said, much less seriousness, uh, seriousness 
in, in my life. Now, last week there was a taster, a joy of joy of something, the really taster, where we had to paint uh, something every every day for for a week. And um, I don't know what to paint. Some turn out good, some turn out totally awful. And actually, one one of those homework was to paint something awful. Uh, just a bit like for people who've done uh, creating the impossible. No, we have fail week uh, in the creating impossible, and that was like the same thing. It was the that was the fail day just to. Uh, show people that they will survive if they don't make something beautiful. And it was the point of making something ugly, which in my case, because I don't know what I'm doing, was fairly easy. Um, but um, yeah, just much less seriousness, much um, and not taking things uh, personally. Like I said, work in progress. Sometimes we forget, no. <laughs> um, but to come back, to come back in the now, way quicker. Yeah, and sometimes I see, yeah, like I said, a play, playfulness in life. Maybe sometimes I see like my soul in the background, checking the movie of my life while eating popcorn, and see. Okay, what is she going to do next now? And uh, and yeah, just yeah, just living life because that's the purpose of life is a joy of being. It's just we are here because we wanted to feel the the wind on our face. We wanted to taste the, the, the food. We wanted to just play with life, not the serious life of all oh, the to do this. Oh, my soul wanted to this, and now I have to do all those those go to all those lessons. We have a team because also sometimes also I do life between life regressions with clients. So we do have a team, but there's less seriousness and we're here to enjoy the time that we're here. And the less we put ourselves in it, more we can enjoy our time here. And just go from that grounding and see what shows up. So, should I talk some more? Or... <laughs> don't, don't you love when that, that place just comes to that place where there's that stillness, you know? It's like, okay, wisdom saying, calm down. <laughs> and then, um, no, I'm, I, I, what I'm hearing, I lo what I love, you said playfulness a couple times. And what I loved about that is that the principles have offered me a, 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 a place in my mind where there's no urgency. You know, urgency, I used to live in urgency, getting to the next thing, what's going to be the next thing, how am I going to be at that next thing? And so I have a question for you around, um, I, I didn't know that you were a dietitian in the armed forces. That's very interesting. I didn't know that. And so with all the experiences one comes with, and, and you know, many in the room have more than just their one job. You know, we all have had different experiences. When you think of the three Ps, first, when did they come into your life? When did that happen? Like I said, it's true, Jane is smart. And I think it's four or five years ago. Yeah. Uh, that they came into, uh, into my life. And like I said, for me, what attracted me to them, it was a spiritual sign uh, uh, of that. Um, and more I look in that direction and more that's what I'm interested in. Yes, there's the principle of thoughts and lots of people talk about thoughts and yes, it's only your thoughts, it's only your thoughts. But I would like to go deeper behind that. Um, more, to the, more towards the principle of mind. Mm. And um, to go before we make all those thoughts. Um, So think about that because most, most of my clients come for dep for, for depressions or, or uh, anxiety or or trauma. Uh, so I still talk thoughts because well that's the the game. Um, 
but what keeps me looking in that direction is the principle of mind. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, and like I said, the playfulness for me is very important because I was so serious. You know? I, I, I don't think I've read a novel in years because everything I read is either with three Ps or, 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 or techniques and everything. You know? So I just learn, you know, I have to learn more. Um, but now I'm more open to whatever shows up more. Just, yeah, just open to life. And that's what I like about the three Ps, is the lightness. It brings a lightness. Um, and there's no answers, in a sense. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't have to have the answers. Mm -hmm. As previous jobs, you know, you have to have the answers. No, people are looking for you for the answers. Or people come to me because they want you to be fixed. But knowing there's nothing to fix, in a sense, then the answers don't have to come with me. I don't have to find the right technique to <laughs> make them see the light. Uh, and that they already have it. Yeah, it's much more beautiful and um, more enjoyable, too. And you know, I'm going to go back to that question where, you know, it, sometimes, not always, but for me, for sure, and by the sounds of it for you too, you know, it starts with thought. Look at that thought. Look at your thoughts. Look what you're thinking. Look at, you know, it's all this focus on our thinking. And and then, as you said, it, it, there was such a deeper place underneath when when there's a, a shift from all that you're thinking as you lay it all down to come into mind mind being, you know, beyond the consciousness of, you know, beyond conscious mind, beyond what is right in front of us, there's this deeper place of seeing. And it took me a while, I don't know about you, but it took me a while to be able to actually see that. So I'm curious about um, hypnotherapy and the work that you do. When you, you said you're, you're bringing that in, like it's like a, a, a coming together of the three Ps with what you do. How do you find the two come together? What do you see there? What do you? What is it uh, that really there works? There are lots of similarities of the way the two worlds see the way they, they look at the world in a sense. So there were some commonalities. Um, now, if we look at now, Jimmy was NLP. Uh, Michael Neal was in NLP, so there's lots of, I think, if you take a survey of all everybody in, in, in the 3 peer world, there are many uh, people from the hypnosis world and many from the NL, uh, NLP world, um, because there, there are some similarities in a sense. But I try to bring the, the, the subject of where our experience is coming from. Because most of my clients, they say, uh, I have, I'm like this because, because of that. Uh, I feel like this because of that person or that situation. And, and for me, it's important to point out where their, their experience is coming from. And they don't have to to point at someone or something, or even themselves. Um, to learn to forgive. I, I do forgiveness work with all my clients. And they to forgive themselves also. I like the way Bill Pettit uh, say it now. If you walk in, in a dark room and you bump into things and break things, uh, and then one day the light comes on, and yes, you can look of all the things you that you broke, or you can be care, uh, glad that now you have the light. Mm -hmm. that you don't have to bump into things <laughs> anymore. So there's um, so 
So it's in that way that I, I, I'm trying to uh, point people in, in, in the direction of where their experiences is, is coming from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it will have a bigger impact in all their lives and not just that uh, depression or, or, or that event that caused PTSD or, 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 or whatever. So that there's a greater impact in all their lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm hearing the um, the the consciousness in there too. So for some people in the room, NLP, Neuro Linguistics Programming. It's waking hypnosis. <laughs> Wait, yeah. Wait, okay, yeah. So, so um, oftentimes when we've been around the rooms for a while, there's some terminologies that... <laughs> that I throw out, you might throw out. So neuro-linguistics programming was really popular back in the 80s and um, took a, a very big hit when it came, um, came out because people might have been using it in the wrong way. And so it, it uh, took, a, I think, a, a hiatus, if you will, for a while. It just was on the back burner. But um, that was the, that was that was one of the ways that we could see past what was currently in front of us. There was a seeing in there. And the three Ps, um, well, maybe Martine, you could speak to that because you're, you you know, we're, are very familiar. It, it's the three Ps have such a similarity, such a, there's a bridging between the two of them around. Um, so the principles being mind, thought and consciousness. Um, in the eighties, people be, became, started to become really conscious it was like a wave, you know, the hippie waves or the grooves of the hippies coming from the 70s into the early 80s. And, and people started to become very aware of what was going on, you know, due to the war and due to the things that were happening in the world, not dissimilar from COVID. And so uh, a lot of the practitioners and the people that surround the rooms in, in um, the three principles understanding have come from that conscious aware place. Would you agree? We see. Like I said, everybody that I've met uh, through the three Ps, either in person or through those little squares, um, I will say the vast majority of them came to the three Ps from the spiritual world or from, from the self-development world. Um, because people are, 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 are searching. Um, or something deeper. NLP is very much technique driven, but like I said, the map of the world is um, the fact that we're not seeing reality, but our own version of reality mm -hmm. uh, is very strong in both worlds. Mm -hmm. Like I said, most people are searching. A fun fact, I grew up charismatic, and if people don't know what charismatic is, is the Pentecost, Pentecostal of the, the Catholic world. No, uh, they have people speaking in tongues, uh, like language nowadays it's called and stuff like that. So I grew up a bit differently than most people. Um, so I think people have been searching for forever uh, for something, something deeper. And if you look at all the, those teachers and most people that you know in the 3P world, they all been searching either to self-development or, or Tony Robbins uh, type. And, um, and people know it's not through religion that you're going to find it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so that's why I, that brought me there. And that's why I'm trying to uh, point uh, clients in that direction also that there's something deeper mm -hmm. um, especially where I live is extremely secular we are the most secular society in Canada uh, mm -hmm. Quebecers uh, if it, just for reference if a politician is seen going to church um, he won't be elected now this could this disqualify that politician of holding office um, so they're really very afraid of mixing politics and religion. Mm -hmm. But people are still hungry for something deeper, for a deeper meaning. Mm -hmm. 
and pointing clients in that direction, I think, has a, a greater impact than just uh, issue by issue thing. Mm -hmm. You know, often we come to the rooms and we listen to these originals, you know, people that have gone long before us, they began this journey well back into the 70s and, and followed Sid and maybe their own journey before that. And they they come to these rooms and, and both you and I are, you know, it, well into seeing who they are and what they are and what they've seen. And yet when we just start out, like, I just feel like I'm the newest newbie and Chip, or Chip and Jan were saying a couple of weekends ago, Chip and Jan um, Chipman, uh, some of the originals were saying, you know, I feel like I'm in kindergarten with the principals now. I feel like the principals are alive. And what I see is that, you know, these originals, you know, they're coming up to their 80s and they're coming to a place where the message is like really flooding the world right now and it's 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 taking over and and it's you and I and it's it's the Ricks and the Colettes and and, and everyone in this room that are going to be sharing that message so yeah yeah I was just saying. always go deeper you know yeah. sometimes when you're beginning and you go to all those calls and you see people and then it's oh my god those people do get it no uh how come I don't get it as fast no and there's no right or wrong way. There's no right speed or wrong speed. It is the speed that you see it. And the more you say, oh, I have to see it, I have to see it, I have to see it, the less chance you're going to see it. Um, and even Elsie and Chip or George, you know, after his stroke said that he sees it more deeply. Mm -hmm. And I heard him say every year he feels that he should call his old clients because now he sees it even more deeply. No, mm -hmm. um, so there's there's no bottom. Yeah, of that understanding. Yeah, we can always see something more. Mm -hmm. There's no some somewhere to arrive at. Oh yes, once I'm there, yeah. I'm enlightened. Um, and even Sin said, after his enlightenment, you can see more. Mm -hmm. There's more to see. And I also, I, I follow all kinds of other people like Abrams or Creon or I am the word and Adia Shantida. I'm, I'm not only three Ps. And even I am the word said, it's like you're climbing a mountain and you see, you no, know, you think, the summit is there. And once you arrive there, you see that there's more to climb. And we we'll just be grateful that at this level, that's what you see. I'm grateful I'm still climbing. <laughs> and there will be there will be plateau. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and that's okay. And never, never compare your your understanding to somebody else. Mm -hmm. also yeah just be careful you know grateful that what you see and the impact that he has now in your life mm -hmm. i think a lot of people um including myself when i first um started seeing something different when i when i started to, to literally look in a different direction I had a, a lot of ownership, a lot of change in myself. I was taking full ownership. And I often say it was maturity. I was growing up, taking responsibility for some of the things that, you know, I might have put on other people um, uh, in a way that uh, just was, you know, of, of a different mind, not a mind that uh, uh, sees it where responsibility is on me, where I'm, I'm, when I look to myself, I look within then I can own the experiences that are, are in front of me and I'm creating as the thinker. You know, as I, as I understand, I am the thinker. I am also the creator of all the experiences that are to come and have been. And that was a big aha for me. That was one of those places where I didn't see that for a long time. And then it, when it hit me, it was like, oh, oh, so I want to ask, when you consider, 
you know, a lot of people come into the rooms, then they fade out of the rooms. And, you know, and, and we do have other people, you know, lots of beautiful, beautiful people, Eckhart Tolle, Buddha, everybody that's, you know, there's many, many, many divine people out there. But I was kind of hooked at hello with this one. <laughs> like with 3P, it kind of, kind of just, and what would you say? Like for me, it was, it was the calm, this beautiful place of, you know, letting go of the speed of Kelly and just coming into this place of calm. And I just kept going, why is everybody so calm? <laughs> What's going on here? And that was the allure for me. That was what really grabbed hold of me. What was it for you? You make things more simpler. Yeah. And less technique driven. Um, yeah, the simplicity. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with all. I still follow Eckhart Tolle, no? Uh, I still like what he does. Yeah. Uh, because it's, they're all pointing to the same, to the same place. They just use different words to to point and if for you is Sadhguru or Eckhart Tolle well uh, different in, in, in a sense but for me it was the um, the simplicity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the simplicity of it and I think that that you know it's so simple it's so simple that people miss it including myself, you know, years and years and years of looking in many directions, thinking it was always outside myself. It couldn't have been here. This would be the last place I was looking. <laughs> and then all of a sudden it's like, yeah. And but something that what you're saying and, and something I want to make sure and, and lots of people here are three P. So I'm, preaching to the choir here mm. but it's just i call it human 101 yeah it just describes are we all we work it doesn't tell us how to what we should do with it mm -hmm. it just describes how we work and from that understanding have a better experience mm -hmm. It's not listening to because they're all their metaphors. Oh, I should remember that metaphor because next time I talk to Joe, uh, I will use that great metaphor to wake him up. And uh, but we have to to get it for us. Mm -hmm. It has to come from us. Mm -hmm. If we would just say things because we read it in 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 one of those beautiful 3P books. Well, if it's not come from us, it will be like preaching. I agree. So and we have to get it for us. And then it sees, yeah. No, I love what you're saying here because um, this isn't a cult where we're following you know, the message from person to person, um, because yeah, there's many people. And Sid would often say, don't, don't follow me. Never, never follow me. And, and listen beneath my words, because the message that, that I'm pointing to is individual. It's your own. It's where you're going to take your wisdom. And, and that, I think that's the most beautiful thing that I had seen up to this point in my life, which was, you know, this is a unique self. This is a unique space. There's nobody like Kelly in the entire world. Nobody like Martine, nobody like Colette, like Katie. There's nobody like William. There's just you, that unique part of you. And when we let go of the content of our thinking, and we just see that we're the thinker, then all the wisdom can shine through. 
But a lot of times we're, we're in the content of our mind thinking, oh, I need to say it like Dickon. I need to say it like, you know, uh, so-and-so, Barbara Patterson or all these other people. And, and I did in the beginning think that my wisdom wasn't good enough. I thought that my wisdom was, you know, I, I needed to have their content. Give me their content so I could reiterate it over here. And, and slowly but surely it was falling away to, you know, come to this place where, you know, I talk from, from my true self to you and you to me. And it's such a beautiful dance, isn't it? <laughs> such a beautiful place. And I think the person you're talking to feels it yeah. uh, at the same time. Yeah, I agree. Because when we talk to our girlfriends or we talk to a, you know, someone that's known us a while, there's just no, there's no shtick. There's no, you know, uh, what do we call it? Mantra, you know, metaphor, planned execution of things. We're just like, yeah, it's this, it's that, it's the other thing. So it's very much a natural place of being. So... So would you like to open up the room to see what everybody else thinks about this natural place? Well, how are you feeling? What what should we do? No, yeah, okay, go ahead. Yeah. So I'm just going to... It's your show. <laughs> so would anybody else like to uh, share just what they've been hearing or, or just something that's uh, coming up as we have this conversation together? I always like to bring it back to the room. Sharon, you've got a really big smile on. <laughs> okay, that was what I was going to say, the smiles. Uh, you were saying you noticed everyone's uh, being calm. And every webinar I've been on, the, the peacefulness and the smiles, the sincere smiles. It's like uh, everyone is just it's just beautiful and and i've always smiled a lot but it's so i'm so appreciative to see all these other people and and just everyone's they're being they're just there it, it's just it's fabulous it's just great mm -hmm. and um, i love hearing everything and uh, and what marin marine said um you know touch base with me too that and what you've said that um that we all have it. Each of us have this power, this this innate wisdom and innate wellness. And uh, sometimes I forget, and I'm still new in this and everything. And I'll, you know, judge myself. And then it's so nice to be refreshed and to know, um, oh, okay, that's all right. And this too shall pass. And um, then I'm like, I'm okay. You're okay. <laughs> so that old book. <laughs> Anyway, thank you, thank you. Yeah, the smiles. I just it makes me grin ear to ear to see see all the room full of smiles. Yeah, it thank is. You. It is true. Thank you for saying that too. And and that's the simplest thing, isn't it? The smile. You know, just being there with a smile on for people to show up in. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for sharing. And even the. No, we, we used to say, oh, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm a baby in that understanding. But you're looking in that direction. And that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And one day, you might go, poof, no, and surpass everybody else in, in, in your understanding. Mm -hmm. And, like, there's no, like I, I was saying, there's no right speed, no by this time, next month, you have to sing that much. And um, no. Yeah. I think too, it's in the, it's really in the end, like I call it the ordinary presence. It took me a while to come to presence, like to slow down enough uh, to be like, okay, I'm supposed to be here. Like you get repelled into that feeling of like, oh, I really like this really. And then you get there and it's like, oh, I'm 10 minutes late. And, you know, just getting there <laughs> and then getting there and going, oh, wow, everybody's so chill. <laughs> like, wow, this is different. And then, and then 
really just being a part of the energy of the room, like just coming down, you know, <laughs> that that took a, a, a few years for me to just be in the room and, and not have anything on it. You know, I love that saying, um, having nothing on it. Just just being able to show up with and, and more more importantly, a, a, a great part of this conversation, which we hasn't talked, uh, spoke to Martine, is the expectations. You know, coming to a room with our expectations, coming to a webinar with our expectations. Like, what am I going to get here? Give me the data. Oh, I'm not getting anything. It doesn't sound like. And then I'm leaving. This is this wasn't this isn't for me. I didn't get it. <laughs> Anybody been there in that place where you know you're looking for the content? And uh, what do you say, Martine? What do you say? Said that there there's a. Uh, um a tape of SIDS is if you have a, a, a good feeling that all there is to it, take the tape and throw it out of the window. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's just the feeling. Mm -hmm. To be there for the feeling, mm -hmm. to bask in that feeling. Mm -hmm. and that's why Elsie is very good on that. You now, when she feels that there's a good feeling, she stops. And let people be in that feeling. Yeah. And I heard Keith Levin say, at one point it was a three-day seminar with Sid. And after the first day, Sid says, okay, take tomorrow off. And the organizer of the of the seminar were appalled because people had paid for three days. Some had flew, flown from Australia and other places to be there for three days. And he just said, no, oh, take the day off tomorrow. Because he could feel that people needed that time to integrate. And the three piece is only the feeling, it's not what is said is the feeling behind that, mm -hmm. and the feeling it gives you. Yeah, the nothing needed, nothing broken, present moment experience of this moment to the next moment to the next moment. And I realized I let go of my expectations. You know, even in, in, even in the, my own rooms where you know, I, I'm sharing the principles, you know, it, it, I'm, I don't hold expectations for who's coming and when they're coming and how they're coming. I just, I'm just there. And when they come, they come. And uh, if they're not coming, I look forward to seeing them when they do. So expectations was also something that I laid down. Not realizing like, cause each moment is an experience. I don't know what's going to happen. You know, we could be here in the next 10 minutes and it could be just Martine and I at the, you know, for the last five and yay to that. We, we just don't know. Yeah. Letting go of the expectations. Hello, Mr. William. Um, I think the lack of expectations for myself. And so that old saying, I need do nothing, it has so many different levels for me. Uh, and I think that having been around this for so long, uh, more and more, I just enjoy um, being not knowing, just not knowing, not knowing. So. It's kind of, it is more and more empty. And so as I listen and I look at my life so much spent, you know, the saying that our voice is like a roommate in our head. But really what I'm seeing too is that that Bill, that William, that, that identity that I've lived so much of my life from inside that identity. It's like, that's the person that's been comparing himself with everybody else. So it's almost like now, not only do I need not to look at their identity, but mine either. 
it's that world of form and it's so much nicer to be in this world where I, I just don't know. And I look back over the years where I think I started out from resisting the spiritual, the religious, because that's what it was more to me. And then going the route of the, the conscious mind, the psychology, the understanding, all the words and thoughts and feelings and the competition and the other people and all the identities and I'm thinking that's really what matter. But then gradually, and so therefore I was very resistant to the concept of divine mind because it was, uh, I had so many other ways of explaining, explaining what made sense to that identity that I lived, that lived me. Mm -hmm. So I, I just see what of an interesting journey. And so I've listened to so many and read so much and been exposed to so much. But now it's like I don't have to because all I got to do is just be with without me. It's as it really now it's my absence. I like being absent <laughs> and and so anyway so it's like i don't need to say anything but i think it's always this opportunity to explore even more by my silent mind but i have to put words to connect mm -hmm. and so i see the meaninglessness of those words and for me, it is the feeling, and you mentioned the knowing, I, I, somehow those two words blend together. So whether it's a knowing, a feeling, or whatever, it's kind of that presence, and it's just that moment, and that moment somehow has a taste to it. So, so thank you all for making this possible. Thank you for coming. Marty, do you want to say anything to Williams? Well, I think it's beautiful. And I, I also think, I think you knew Sid, right? You met Sid. Mm -hmm. uh, and all those other people back in the 80s. And I've been around quite a while. Mm -hmm. And uh, in one sense, kind of Johnny come lately. <laughs> and, and, and yet I see that um, that even my re reluctance, resistance, whatever that has just, just, just perfect. It was, that was exactly what I, I was meant to do and be, yeah. but, but uh, it's, it's like the layers just keep falling off. Mm -hmm. And I always think of the kaleidoscope, just keep turning a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. It's always new, always different. And I'm always fascinated by what I'm going to happen in, into next. <laughs> and it's, uh, I had uh, just the last thing I'll say, the smile. I had two older sisters, such loving beings who always were so, had these beautiful smiles on their face. And just that was their presence, how they connected to people. And it's so, yeah, anyway, I just love it. Yeah. So, and, and so when I see those smiles, it's like, oh, my curiosity goes up because I want to touch, I want to know, it. okay, what happened just then behind the smile? Like, I don't want to be sold something. And it's so nice that I don't need to buy anything. But something happened in the moment. And, and I'd like to get into that moment with that person because I love that moment myself. And I think, oh, wow, let's do it. Okay. Yeah. The smile is juicy. Thank you for sharing that. And I have to just say, I just love what you said about 
the identity that lives me. I, I can very much resonate with that and understand that. Um, uh, probably lived many years in that for a while. So I'm laying down, I'm laying down that experience as well, William. And, and the freedom yeah. of not, not being here. Yes, yes, exactly. Exactly. There's that space like I, and, I, and you're touching on that place when you said, you know, just like Sharon brought to, to mention, it's like when somebody smiles, when something happens and you see a smile, that's an internal dialogue of something that is a good feeling. That's a direct hit to me. So when I see that, I see the feelings that are happening just as much as I see a physical smile. Which is like a sneeze. I don't control that either. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Were you going to say something, Martine? Yeah, sometimes just staying in that feeling. Mm -hmm. Because trying to explain it, sometimes intellectualize it, and we might lose it. Mm -hmm. um, but staying in that feeling or basking in that feeling without trying to put words into it. Mm -hmm. Well, and I like that, not having, just wanting to flow however it's meant to flow, because I, that's the thing I think I wanted to hang on to or grab it. And I think more and more, I just want to be more in that moment, which means I'm in the moment and out of the moment. And I spend much more time out of the moment, too. Mm -hmm. And I also think that the contribution, like, being here showing up on camera so people can see you and your smile and your energy. I mean, whether you speak or you don't, I feel you in that regard, all of you, you know, because there is, there's something just that little bit more, you know, uh, than, than it is with just your beautiful name and presence. And, and I, I, I love and appreciate that as well. So I honor that anybody who does that. Well, it's when you're around children and my two little guys as they were young, just such bundles of truth in, in, in a moment that you just you just melt because I just uh, they're so they're inside out and uh, it just everything. So um, and and so that that's that's today, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's I see the kid in every one of us here Absolutely. and you all you all just light up when you're just forgetting who you are and just play. Let's play. Come on out and play. Yeah. Reminds me as a kid, knock on the door. Can Dolores come out and play? Can Sammy come out and play? Yeah. It's the same thing. That is. It is. Uh, William, I have a, a hand up here. Celia, please. Yeah, hello. Um, I have been uh, in this understanding for one year now, and uh, I've been at... Um, uh, many webinars and I know that uh, Sid says uh, go out and live your life uh, but um, when I go out um, between uh, I go out and live my life and I go to the webinar I see the same people at many webinars so I'm not the only one coming back and listen and uh, like to be in this feeling so um, um i understand that i have to to uh, to go out and live my life but i but i also uh, feel that i'm i'm very comfortable to be in this room mm -hmm. um because i i i feel like i grow when i listen to you mm -hmm. I will say that it's true. There's always the same people in those webinars and you're totally right. And I remember Elsie saying uh, at one webinar, uh, oh, okay, it's always the same people. Now I don't want to see you all ever again. No, jokingly, I go and live your life. Because we're here to enjoy life. That's what we're here for. And like I said, one, the three Ps are just human one-on-one. It's just to tell us how we work. 
and where our experience is coming from. And from that understanding, we can go and play with life. We can go and live our life. And Sid also always said, and I totally agree with him, that he, he could do more for the universe by uh, tending his garden than go and preach you know, uh, and, and speak to, to groups. Because from that understanding by who you really are, you're going to interact differently to people. And I see that like, and that will have an impact on that person. And that person then will interact with somebody else. And from, from that good feeling, and you see grows and grows and grows and grows. The beauty of those uh, webinars is that we're still human beings, and sometimes we still forget or we get caught up. And going back to those webinars, it wakes us up again. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Um, oh yeah, I forgot about that. Or, or um, maybe you had um, bad encounter with someone and then you come to this webinar. Well, it reminds you who you really are because even though you temporarily forgot, it's really like a little top up <laughs> uh, uh, in a sense. And you never know when somebody will say something at one point, and you go from here to here. <laughs> um, so yes, go live your life from that understanding. You'll have so much, a much better experience of life. But coming to those webinars just keeps it going mm -hmm. uh, uh, in a sense. Or make sure sometimes you just feel that no, not, not everybody around you is into that understanding or want to talk three Ps. Uh, so being in, in those in those rooms no gives you an opportunity also to connect with like-minded people, which is not always possible. Um, so I don't see there's a contradiction between one and, and, and the other. You know, I have to chirp in too. I want to say that um, just looking in this room, I I never knew Sharon or Celia or Rick or Martine or I knew Colette because Colette and I met at the convention and William and Anya, which I'm just seeing for the first time, I think, uh, as far as physically connecting with you. This whole connection here, this beautiful feeling that I get to fill myself up with for an hour and a half in the morning on Monday, none of you were here before January. And now I feel like you're all my friends. Like I could just call you up and go, hey, Sharon, what's happening? You know, like this is what the principles is. And sometimes when I'm running at the speed of Kelly, like I did, you know, in my past, and I'm moving at such a rate you know, looking for or uh, wanting, wanting something. Um, I, I miss these experiences. I, I, I'm, I'm not in the moment for them. And so since I've slowed down, since I've been able to slow down, all of these people show up and they just come and they sit and we chat and we listen and we, and it's like, it, it's, it is the principles. It's the feeling of this understanding moment to moment. And, and I hope that, you know, people feel good to continue to come back again and again, like you guys do, because, you know, there's, there's this place that we just are pointing to that in, as far as I'm concerned, I have never been pointed in this direction before anywhere else. And it comes with this beautiful, loving connection of great people coming together for a little bit of time and like Martine said, a top up, you know, a little bit of love and understanding on your Monday morning. And what's better than that? And so I love it. I absolutely love it. It, it shows through you. You, <laughs> you, you demonstrate it. Thank you, William. Thank you. Um, I can't say it's always been something that's easy. 
it hasn't been. I had a lot of thinking, a lot of thinking, <laughs> you know, do, oh my God, what are, what are we going to say? Who's going to show up there? What if nobody comes? That was the big one. What if nobody comes? <laughs> and so I, I, I just realized that moment to moment, as I think and create my experiences, I attract people that are really, really cool. <laughs> and I really like them. And we just keep coming. And so the conversations I want to share with you at Kind Mind are changing in the fact that it's not always going to be an original. And I am so happy about that. It's going to be you. It's going to be you in your wisdom, you in your understanding, and maybe the whole room just talking a beautiful conversation until it's over. Because there's going to be a time when the originals just aren't here. And so I like to think that the conversations are going to be supported by us. You know, this is, this is where the, 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 the principles are going is right here. And I don't have anything more than you other than I click the Zoom link and you all show up. <laughs> other than that, we're all here in it together. <laughs> so, yeah, Cecilia, did you have another question or did you want to speak again? Or is that your older hand? <laughs> your hand's still up there. I wasn't sure. You can come on and tell me anyway. <laughs> You're muted, my friend. Well, oh, I don't know how to put it down. It's okay. No problem. But, but uh, um, when Sid says uh, don't be a follower, um, he, he, he maybe mentioned that, that I have to follow my own wisdom. Mm-hmm. True, true. It's an exploration. Those talks here, those Zoom things, it's an exploration, really. And we're just here to explore. Mm -hmm. We just follow explorers. Mm -hmm. We're nowhere to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So does anybody have anything else they'd like to share? Anybody who hasn't shared yet? We're such a beautifully small room, so sometimes it's safer to, to stick that little hand up. Because <laughs> I, I certainly know I don't necessarily do it all the time in big rooms. But this is a nice little group of people. And if nobody does, that's okay. Because um, I want to mention that today is the National Indigenous People Day. And being in Canada and in British Columbia with the current situations of the Indigenous people, um, we've had some deep suffering, some deep suffering and some extreme challenges with the experiences of the uh, 215 children that uh, were found and then another I think it was 128 again in, in just our locale, right here in my own province. And um, and so what I thought I'd like to do, if it's okay with you, Martin, did you want to have anything before we close? No? Okay. So what I thought we would do is just have a moment of silence for the indigenous, and for those children who were unfortunately um, compromised in a way that they never knew that was going to happen. And so I'd like to honor that and those people and do it in the best way that, uh, that I can. Um, Katie, what happened was um, many of the Indigenous children, Native children um, in, in Canada were taken to homes, removed from their family dynamic, taken to um, private schools where um, they, they succumbed things that they should never have succumbed to. Um, and I won't get into it because it is the past, but uh, they died. Many of them died and um, were not able to withstand the conditions in which they were put in. And they probably never expected to be taken away from their own natural dynamic of family, but that was the way of things back then. And, We've learned different. We've learned different now. So the children are um, 
the, the graveyards of these children have been found this year and there are large numbers. And so um, we are honoring them, honoring them in their path back to home. And uh, so if we have all of us who would like to stay, I'd just like to have a moment of silence for them. And then rather than coming back and uh, sharing um, anymore, why don't we just uh, do a silent goodbye? Is everybody cool with that? Yeah. Okay, so just leading us into a place where if you feel comfortable um, to have a soft gaze or to close your eyes, please feel free to do so. And to just take a moment to find the breath. Find your breath of life. That place in you where you can feel your own feet touching the ground, your own space on the seat in which you sit, feeling the ground in which Mother Earth provided for us, and taking a moment to breathe that mother into you, into yourself. And that breath of life in which we all feel that moves within us. And just as if you could imagine breathing the life back into all of those children. The life in which they will now be living in a different realm. As we hold space for them in silence now, Namaste, go in peace. Can stop the recording.